Now, somebody wanted to know how to do oak leaves. So I'll just give a little demonstration, of a very quick one. So if we get the leaves, they're going to grow like a plant, of course, as we know. So I always use these movements and these movements like so, you see. So you get this this flow going. So one will come underneath another one or over the top of another one. So I'm doing this rhythm, you see, like we do with the scrolls. This is just for this um, design, if you want it. Um, so I will put another leaf coming down here. So you can make them larger or smaller. They come underneath one another and they come over the, here from the back again here. So this is the rough shape, shall we say, to give you the movement. And then how do you fill the spaces? See, like most of the people I see doing an oak leaf, which is in a natural way. I sometimes use a little bit of artistic license. I will start here, you see. So it's got to grow off of a twig. So the twig or whatever comes under here, the little branch. So I will use this just as a movement, as like we would do with scroll work. And now I will do the filling in of this. My oak leaves are slightly different to some other oaks. There's a variety of oaks, the Quercus, American oak, and various names for oaks. And on occasions, I will put a little dent in them that makes them look slightly like a hawthorn, but it, it's artistic license and it makes a better effect, I think. You can contradict me, of course. Anybody can contradict. There we are. So we're getting this shape here because we get the round in here. And um, I used to look at the oak leaves on the trees just down the road from where we are. So here we have this shape. Now we've got one growing underneath. And of course, we've got this twig coming here. doesn't matter. It's just they give you an indication of what we're can happen in the background. A lot of people have a tendency to ignore the background and just concentrate on their oak leaves and smother the whole area with oak leaves but don't leave any spaces for actual design. You can, yes, of course you can. Look at an oak tree, it is smothered. But the leaves go over the top and under and little birds and insects have got to fly through, you see. So you must think of nature. So there's one here, you see, like that. And another one here. So that's a small one, that's a large one. They do vary. And all nature does, younger leaves and older leaves. And we have this, you see. So I'm working here like so. I could bring it down in here and move it around like this way. I'm doing this in pencil, of course, and it's just a demonstration. I've got nothing in mind, but this is how you will work out a design. It's not always right at the first time, you see. So it's coming up and it's getting smaller as it comes to the tip. And see, these are flat on, as though you're looking at them square on. You do have slight overlaps and, and things like that. Now, in between these spaces, what do we do? Now, an oak tree has little... It produces seeds for the future. So here comes an acorn, you see. Now, an acorn will be egg-shaped, oval-shaped, it's got to grow, so it has a little stem. Now, it can either look as though it's going away, so you do the curve this way, you see, and then it, there you, you've got this little stem. That's the cup, and that's the acorn itself. You have a little there. And you can put a, a twin coming off this side, if you wish. 
See, it can go underneath or make it smaller. So you've got it going that way. Now, if you want it to come this way, you make it that curve, you see. So now it's coming towards you. There's a little pip on the top. These are the waves. Now, you've got all this here, and you've got this here, and like this. I'm just concentrating on this small area at the moment. Now, a, a simple way I do this, if I was to carve these, I don't normally carve like I see most people. They do it, they make it concave. So they scoop out this here. It's a natural leaf. It looks a natural leaf, but it doesn't always appeal to me as a carving itself. So what I do is I normally trim all the way around the edge. This is for carving, but I leave this cameo, which means raised. Here, you see. So this is raised. And if you look at most of my things, they, they are more sculptural in this way. So it, it's coming up instead of becoming convex, it's concave. They're concave, rather. Right? Mine's convex. See? And then you have this coming through here. All right? And so now, a simple way of doing it, of course, if you've got a, a pen... And, of course, it can be larger. It takes time if you've got a smaller pen. So in between here, if I was to do my outlining, I think I need a larger pen for this, if I can find one. Um, that's a thing. Um, keep on singing. Here we go. It's so just slightly larger, but uh, I've got bigger ones this but to save time on the television. So now, because I'm cutting away, if I'm an engraving, I've got to think how that's going underneath here. I could put another acorn in here, coming through here if I wanted. Okay, come on, just put an acorn in here. It fills in space and it just saves me a bit of time. Okay. You see, it's a bigger one, this one. Does it matter? Okay. It's according, when you cut away the background, these things get smaller, you see, as they go. So now we've got him in here. Okay. And we have this. Now I can cut this away now. Uh, on occasions, uh, in here, and on here, for instance, if it was in a panel, shall we say, and you wonder what to do with this area, here, I'm doing this around here. All right, so we've got all of that. It's blank here. And I look at the trees, and of course they're, they're growing, and they've got little twigs, and all little insects live on these. In an oak tree, the hundreds of different varieties of insects and various other living creatures. Okay, we have this. And now you can darken this out here, you see. So that sets these coming forward. And it's according to the size and whatever. Now, instead of blanking that out completely there, you see I've got this, and I can take a twig coming out here. So now I form a little round here, you see, I can do this. And if I do the same, because it's going to go off into infinity, into the background there, I could just do another one like that. See, a little round, see, that's all it is. I do a little round again like that. So now you've got the twigs. And you can vary them coming around here and make these here. And you can shade over those like this similar type thing to lose it in the background but not to lose the twig it fills in gaps instead of being a big black area just by a little bit of a cutting or a drawing like this you can get all these movements going through you see like this and you just do that because with a pen and a background like that just by doing these little circular movements like so 
see how it, you know, a little twig comes out here like this. And so that's how the, the movement of this will go. I don't know how long this video will last. It's just a, an exercise because somebody asked me how to do it. And that's how we will form these leaves, you see. So it's got to come under here and you can shade underneath here. We have um, the veins that come through here and they will come through in various ways like so, you see. So I will now form this leaf like this. You see, I... I don't normally just do one great leaf coming out here. You see, I like to put these little indentations in. Just does a little bit more, um, shall we say, it creates an interest. Some botanist or some clever clogs will contradict you and say, that's not the type of oak it should be. But um, we're appealing to the viewer. You see, I'm just doing this now, just to fill in. And now I've got this here. Because you've got an old gnarled oak, it could be growing for hundreds of years. And um, then we have uh, this. You see, it comes like this, and you can take this in. And that is how... Another one, because it's going to grow out and underneath here, it's going to go. But, of course, I said we put this in a panel like this. And um, we will just do another one around here. Just to See how it can go. You're darkening the background as you're going. It's not doing a lot of work. That's how it and it looks more complex than it is, really. So it's just by practicing these. And then, of course, if it goes underneath, you have to do some kind of shading here to give it this effect coming underneath, you see. So you either cut it, but you don't lose it. And you can put various bark on it, little bits of movement like this. It's, as again... So we keep on mentioning it's the size that matters and uh, if it's so small there's no need to put all the detail in if you're using the mi microscope and your viewer has got exceptional eyesight <laughs> so when he peruses it he will see with the eagle eyes, all these little details. But it's not necessary. You can over do your engraving or your drawing by being a bit too clever and smothering it with this, you see. So now you've got to think where the lights and the shades are coming in. As I mentioned before, this is a rough sketch. It's a rough sketch, um, so it's to give you some idea. I can do better ones than this later on, but it's, um, if I get any response for doing better ones, you see, I'm pushing the leaf out now by doing this and whatever here. And uh, all right, look, look, this all you do is you just get this movement here of oh, acorns or whatever it is you can have another one going that side and um, rough sketch of course and then you see how you do it and you've got a little clutch there you see of acorns and of course in there they have little movements like this I don't know if you ever pick them up in the woods and have a look at them but that's what it comes like so and uh, while you're doing it 
you fantasize on little squirrels and birds taking them for the winter and bashing them into the bark of trees or as we have in the new forest in England here they let all the, the pigs go out to eat the acorns because we've got wild ponies that live in the woods and if they eat these acorns they're deadly poison to these but to the pigs they love them and it makes their bacon or pork give a nice flavour and of course the oak tree is um, where they first got the ink from because they used to char these down it's satanic acid in these leaves you can smell the tannic acids in them this is what they tan leather with and all that type of thing so this is the sort of thing you think about as you're drawing and um, that's where the interest comes in and uh, with the scribes in the old days they used um, burn down the uh, make the ashes and of the ink and they put iron oxides and things like that in it that's what it used to burn through the paper so not the paper well but that's why they used parchment but if you did it on paper sometimes it was acid and it used to bite over the years bite through i ramble away but this is what i do when i'm drawing you see i'm thinking as i'm going and so th that's how we will do this and we'll put more leaves in here Oh, these are veins. It's, it's a living plant, you see. You do this. And then you observe your own. Right? And so that will give you a rough idea of what I'm doing. And then I can do a better ones later on. But it's just getting the initial effect so that um, learners or people that like oak leaves can get a different effect of what I do you see that's it you, that's all you're doing there so you, instead of just on a blank or smothering it with oak leaves you got living plants in there you can put whatever you like in there later on and another leaf will come down here again you see this is all you do and you do another one here and uh, bring it round there and then of course it might move up like that it might take a that effect on the end of it. It's not very pretty, that one, still. Okay, I'll just leave that for now. And um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs>